How's it going guys? This is JLH Mac for OP Poker. Uh, today we're going to go over a small session review of our other player, uh, Nick Lost Gambit Walsh. Um, these are played at the $7 power up level, which is currently the highest stakes they have available. Hopefully we'll be going into certain plays and how we can improve and maximize our EV in each decision. Uh, obviously this is a lot of work in progress and a lot of guesswork as we're still early in the, the, de the development of the game. So let's try and figure out how it works. Right, so this first hand we got 7-2 and we got limped into. Uh, I think generally speaking once the button has folded and the small blind is up against the big blind, I think it's generally going to be a limp strategy with a few larger raise sizes in. The reason for this is that position doesn't play very well at all, but they've already put some dead money in there. So a lot of the time they'll be losing less money by just uh, limping rather than just straight out folding and losing half a big blind every every hand so I would presume there's a lot of limping involved um, we could ISO this this type of hand 7-2 off but because we have position uh, as a bluff to go with our stronger hands but I think for now people are playing far too wide because they think the power cards can help them slightly more than what is going on at the moment so I would for now advise not ISO bluffing that if it was a hand like 5-4 suited or 5-3 suited or 4-5 off suit I think that's completely a lot more reasonable because it has a lot better playability um, if they were always going to fold once you ISO then it's it's worthwhile thinking about ISOing hands like 70 but right now it doesn't seem like anyone's doing that Uh, 9 7 facing a button limp, which I don't think in the future is going to be as often uh, occurring. Uh, we probably want to be playing anything that that can play well, has any playability, so most suited, most suited or all suited cards, and then anything connected and anything high. So we're definitely just going to over limp here. Um, if the blind levels were higher, then I would advise using Intel as well. But for now, I think it's fine to just, just limp. Uh, we got a guy sitting out, so that means we're already heads up. And we have a very interesting spot. Because we flopped a flush draw and a gut shot. Um, this has obviously got a very good equity in a normal game of Hold'em. And also obviously going to be very good in this format. The problem is we're out of position, which means if we were to do to engineer, so let's say we engineered a card to come out on the turn, the button now has an opportunity to not only change that card that's coming out, but also to take it away if he wanted to or disintegrate it or, or whatever. He knows what he has an opportunity if we were to decide to play those cards. That means that we have to play a lot more passive in general. And I think for that reason alone, at the moment, we're just going with a check all the hands to the aggressor, even though he limped so far. So that's what we did. Uh, and he checked back. On the turn, we can either decide to probe and try and take the pot down, or we can decide to check again. I think I would much prefer to be probe betting in some way. Uh, I think a small size is going to do fine. Um, we're trying to just get hands that haven't connected at all to fold. Uh, while we're re re we are repping uh, top pair and better. So it looks as though Hero decides to play Intel. Uh, I think that's a reasonable play. Because at least it, it lets you know whether you're going to hit the draw or not. Um, the only problem is that once you play Intel for quite a small pot and then bet out, 
the uh, villain is oftentimes going to look to change the outcome of the, the card that you've seen coming in the future. So oftentimes you might find that they'll reload into that hand or they'll engineer another card, which is, is fine. Uh, for the most part, especially in small pots, you don't mind him burning a lot of power cards for nothing. But uh, I, I like using Intel in other spots. So, Heroes decided to use the Intel, and he can see that the diamond is now going to come on the river. Um, for this reason, I think it's much better to just be checking, rather than betting and if you do bet them to bet a smaller size, one that doesn't encourage him to use power points. So our hero decides to, to check. Uh, now we've rivered the flush. The question is how do we get value from hitting this flush? If we bet too large, then we leave ourselves open to power play exploits, the worst of which would be disintegrate. But the only way we can get around disintegrate is either by jamming all in or using a check raise to an all in size. Uh, I think personally I would just go for a small sized bet about 100, 100 chips. It's one that doesn't really encourage him to use that, the disintegrate. I think 120 is maybe a little bit too large overall fine, as long as you're not betting pot size or two times the pot, that can put you out. Now let me take it down. So in this next hand, we see villain. Both villains have more power up points than us, which means we have to be slightly more wary of how wide we play our range. Uh, I think five nine at the moment is not an open, mainly because the population tendency out of position is to be calling slightly too wide. Uh, I think the best way to adjust to this at the moment is to up the sizing of the button so while we're still 25 big blinds effective that would mean to be betting a size of three times the big blind for a range something like this uh, this is one of our charts that you can find on our website um, if you notice on that chart sorry there is uh, this is grayed out so we don't want to be playing that hand um, that is not to say that in the future that we we wouldn't want to. Uh, it's just because people are playing too wide out of position right now. So villain uh, hero decides to use X-ray. Um, I think that folding is almost definitely the best play for now, uh, and X-ray is oftentimes better to be used on a later street. So I definitely don't encourage this kind of play. Now that we see what both players have, and they are uh, what the big blind especially is on the weaker side, it means that we can be attacking them as wide as this. But I think there will be better uses for it in the future. So we can see that the small blind just reloaded both his cards. Uh, while he's not invested much in the pot at all, I think that this is a bad play and you shouldn't be doing that pretty much ever unless the blinds were a lot bigger. Uh, now he plays Intel as well, so he's wasted quite a lot on this pot. And the big blind is called as well. So this is just to show how wide the people are calling. Once, even once you can see their cards, they're not folding. It's quite interesting. So right now we have a dilemma where we can see that the big blind has hit 
at least one pair and we can see that the small blind has used two power cards so he's quite invested in this pot uh, and we have just an air ball a complete bluff I think that now we have to just completely give up on the hand I can't even see a single turn card that, that makes me want to be investing more money into this pot unless it's a nine I guess and even then I'd want to be wary so yeah I would completely just give up at this point considering how much they seem to be wanting to invest in this pot so our hero decides to bet out um, I don't think it's a particularly good idea uh, specifically because both players have used quite a lot of powers to know what is going on and given themselves two opportunities upon which to hit uh, I would be very surprised to see this get through the amount of times it's required but it does this time So with ace eight here, I think you can just uh, raise as an isolation raise to about three big blinds, just for pure value, value's sake. You don't have to worry about being limp jammed on, like in a spin and go. So it's it's very easy to just iso in this spot. Resume that's what. Yep, this is what we're doing. And we flop top pair. So uh, the question is whether you are afraid of disintegrate or not. On a lot of board textures, especially ones that aren't volatile, I prefer checking back top pairs to protect it from disintegrate. But on a very volatile board like this, um, which has straight draws, flush draws, and all sorts. I much prefer betting um, to a size, a reasonable size, say 240. I think it's hard for Villain to distinguish what what we do have because there are two hearts out there. He might end up deciding disintegrating other cards. Um, but we don't want to be committing too much to the pot because we don't want to say, for example, uh, mash the pot button here. So. Yeah, I would like a bet. Uh, if the board was a lot drier, then I definitely prefer just protecting the hand by checking back, and then disintegrate can't be used. Uh, now the tin, the tens come out. Our hand is still relatively strong, so I think we should be betting now for sure. But we check. Uh, and on the river, it's possible to go for very thin values, so we'd want to bet somewhere between min and 100 chips. Yeah, about 100 chips, one-fifth pot, if we do want to, for value. But we just check it down to showdown and win the pot. I think that was far too weak, especially uh, on the turn, at least. Given the fact we have position, we have quite good cards relative to being in position. Let's say our uh, small blind was to decide to raise us after betting on the turn. We can engineer a river and let it come out. Or we can engineer and reload into it. Or or even we can engineer and then EMP in the jam. Lots of, lots of ways to, to win that pot. Uh, five six is a tricky one because it does play all right post flop, but being in the small blind in a freeway pot is really difficult. So I wouldn't say that. I would say at the moment it's probably a profitable play because of how bad people are playing, but in the future you might 
want to just be folding it. I say right now you can play it as long as you're playing reasonably with your hero cards. The hero decides to fold. So we will move it on a bit. Okay, so now we're facing another limp from the small blind. This time we've got king six, which is a very average hand. I think that it just makes sense to be checking it back. We don't have any power advantage, so it's not worth isoing a hand that's not on the bottom of a range or the top. So just leave it. So our hero decides to... I saw. Interesting. Yeah, I think ISOing. If you are going to be ISOing a hand like King Six, then that means you're going to be ISOing about seventy percent of your hands, or even more, which I think is just pro almost definitely too much. It leaves you into a spot where people can be EMP jamming into you, and generally speaking, they should be playing a much tighter range from the small blind. So. I'd prefer to just be seeing a flop. Now that the ace has come out, it's quite difficult to decide whether we want to go to showdown with our hand or not. I mean, there is a lot of money in the pot, so it's very likely that small blind is going to want to be incentivized, at least, to want to win this pot. And if he has any draws or whatever, he might be looking to make a play at some point. Um, we have the King of Diamonds which is very useful and we have the Six of Hearts which is also not so bad um, to go with our Engineer and Reload. So I think it's reasonable even though it does have some sort of showdown value to be using it as a bluff. I presume. Okay, so Hero does decide. I think a small sizing about a quarter pot or one third pot seems Reason what should get the folds that you desire. It's much more of a semi bluff than you might realize because of the fact you can engineer and reload. So, this is not in any way a pure bluff. This next hand we have. Pocket sevens in the small blind, which is a lot tougher to play than you might expect. Fortunately, we have the power card EMP, which makes it a lot easier to play. Um, I think that all you want to do is take the blinds and jam, so EMP and jam. If you didn't have the EMP and you were in this position, it's very, very tough to play, especially when both people have 15 power points, and I think that you don't really want to be raising even pocket sevens. I think that tens plus you definitely still want to be raising even if you didn't have any powers and they had lots of powers. Um, so that with those hands and that sizing I'd prefer to just be jamming as well. Um, but yeah we can just EMP jam. Take it down. Right, King Queen on the button. It's definitely one of our stronger hands. So we can definitely look to play. Um, given that our big blind is only 10 big blinds deep, or 11 effective. Um, I prefer a min raise over anything else. If he's under eight big blinds, then you would have to start thinking about limping. But until then, I think it's fine to be raising. And we flopped up there. So our small blind here has made quite a big mistake unless he has decided to always reload or upgrade what he engineers. Um, this also leads him quite a risk, ex quite exposed because now we know exactly what one of his card holdings. 
So I would not recommend doing this very often at all. Uh, leaving a pair out here is very confusing. It could it could be a trap if you, let's say you had a set of tens or a set of queens, hoping that someone would would take this and create two pair for themselves. But I don't see someone making a trap as elaborate as this at the moment. Um, in hero shoes, it makes a lot of sense to just re get rid of the. Uh, king reload into the five, and now you've got two pair, um, and then to EMP and jam. I hope that's what he our hero does. Okay, I don't see any reason for engineering at all. I think you just want to reload the king, take the five, now you've got two pair. And to EMP and jam. And that didn't go very well. Okay, we're in another position where the small blind limped, and we are sitting here with a two connected one that plays very well post lop, but we only have two powers and we have less power points than the other player. So I think isoing in this spot is worse than the king's six spot. So I hope we don't do that. We only can use one of our powers, as you see. So good, we check it back. And we hit the bottom pair. Uh, we want to just try and get this to show down. And now we're in a quite a tough spot. Okay, he just checks, which is odd, but we just try and get to show down now. We do. So jack four here, I think, almost definitely, I would just fold out. We don't really want to be putting any more money in the pot while we ha are at a power disadvantage with a bad hand. So we'll move on to the next hand. So we have six seven uh, in our opening charts for twenty five big lines deep. We'll, you will find that we don't open it. So now we're in the big blind with 7 8 and we've been exposed. I think that the pot is now going to be 600, which is quite a large amount. I think using Intel at this point onwards is going to be pretty helpful. So I would be using Intel from the get go. I think Intel is a very, very strong hand as long as it's played as quickly as possible. And we see the five of spades. And it looks like we've, we've flopped a very, very strong hand. So, now that we've flopped a straight, we really don't want anyone disintegrating this board. We've got two options. We either jam all in or we try and get to the turn. 
given that we can see the 10, I think it's much more reasonable to decide to, to just straight out jam because it's very likely that the guy in the small blind, Tex Nev, would engineer or uh, reload to see that this 10 is coming and then stack off. Um, otherwise, I think checking and just hoping to get to the turn is a better play. Uh, and now that someone's bet, <coughs> uh, we just want to be calling his, his bet and then on the turn start applying some pressure. So I would be now be leading out on this turn card. I would be um, just making sure that I'm getting value with the strong hand I have. And again, I would be betting now. I think half, half pot is reasonable. I think any more than half pot can put you at a disadvantage, especially as we can see that another pair card is coming in the future. Luckily, he only has five power points, so it's much less of a problem than if he had 10 or 15. But considering that we can see the nine of spades out, this could easily help him have a full house or whatever. So. We definitely want to be concentrating on a, a smaller size and seeing how it goes from there. Uh, but we take it down. A nice pot. Okay, so this is our first situation where we are in a small blind and the button has folded. So I would be looking at limping most of my range here and King 8 suited definitely would be a part of that. Uh, there is some merit to free axing it to go with your stronger hands, but I think that King 8 is definitely something I'd just limp. We have a power advantage as well, which is nice. Uh, I think cloning the upgrade right now is probably not the best idea. You want to have something that goes very well with these two cards, clone and upgrade. So if Ace King was in the future to play Engineer or Scanner or Intel, then you can clone that instead. And it plays a lot better. Uh, I think Inteling, uh, upgrading right now doesn't have much merit, so yeah, I think it's kind of a, a waste to do that before you've seen many cards. I think using upgrade or reload pre-flop without having any pressure applied onto you is normally a mistake. So if you see right now, Ace King has decided to play Intel, you could clone that Intel now if you were able to see the flop, which you are. Uh, and then you would probably want to use it in this situation. So now we're at a quite strong disadvantage where he can see every card that we re reload or upgrade. Um, uh, but at least he's put so much money into a pot where so much power points into a pot where it's not worth it. So. At least we got that advantage going for us. Eight nine would definitely be something that I would want to open as a limp, considering that the big blind is very short. So. Uh, 
Oh, we decide to fold. I think it's okay move. I don't think you're losing too much EV in that spot. So now that the small blind is limped, I think you just see the flop and then decide whether to to play any cards. I think using upgrade or reload before you've seen the cards is fine as long as you are going to then jam him, jam it in against him, almost regardless of whether you improve or not, because you're now giving him the option to use powers on the flop which you don't want so yeah I think given that he did use upgrade I, I would like to see him just jam all in uh, now you're just trying to check it down um, there could be some merit on this turn to EMP with the intention of jamming uh, or putting in the one big blind I think you are eight you're never going to want to be folding it and you don't want him to be improving his hand so yeah I wouldn't mind doing that uh, but now you can just check it down and if you are deciding to bet this river then again I would be using the EMP because it's very easy to improve your hand on this board. With a reload. Okay, this is a very tough spot to figure out. Um, we have an ace, we have someone that's gone all in, and we're all very shallow. I think you're just going to play a strength of your hand, and ace six should be good enough to want to get it in. So you do just want to jam yourself. And we hit a straight, so. That's fairly nice. And now we're heads up. And we're quite shallow, so... Right now we have a slight power advantage, and it seems as though our villain is using cards oftentimes too early. Because now, that whatever he does, we can alter the state of these if we wanted to play the hand. I think we are in a very tough spot because of the strength of our hand is so weak. We have free and he has free and a bit big blinds. I don't see how we can be folding so it's very likely we're going to want to be um, using reload. Now the question is whether to just reload the 2 or reload the 10 as well. I think personally just reloading is the two is better because you are always going to be calling almost no matter what unless you have a hand that's maybe 10, 10 free or worse. So I think just reloading the two is probably the best play because on average the hand that you're going to reload into would be a seven. So yeah, I would just reload the two. Uh, now that we've hit ace king, it's, it's a pretty nice spot to just get in. And we win. Uh, I think there's some merit to remembering that he chose the scanner and decided that he wanted both cards. So actually, reloading both cards is is probably 
a good good uh, thing to think about. Uh, if you had a nine or less, then it's definitely a spot where you would reload both. Ten is a bit borderline. I don't quite know the maths on it, but yeah, I think it's a very fine play. All right, guys, that's all for this video. Be sure to check out our Twitch channel at op underscore poker and our website, op-poker.com. Links in the description below. Uh, ciao for now.